Hello, welcome back to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. I'm Connie and I'm one of your Dixie Bell brand ambassadors. In the video today, I am going to be using the best red in the world. I'm not biased, that's the truth. To make over this little cabinet that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace. So here's the best colour red paint in the world. It's called Honky Tonk Red and it's from Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint range. I'm going to be using a spray bottle with some tap water in and that's just going to help the paint go over the surface because as you can see I'm going over raw pine. I've already done the prep work to this piece and that's because it was waxed so I had to strip that off before I could paint it. If you want to see how to strip wax off a piece of furniture I do have a video on my own YouTube channel where you can find me at Faf Designs and that just explains a little bit how to do that to a wax piece of furniture. So as I mentioned, I do have my spray bottle with me and that's just going to help the paint glide on. I'm also working outside and it's quite warm, so that's just going to help the paint not dry too quickly before I've had a chance to kind of get it on the piece. And I'm just using a synthetic brush for this and just giving it an all over first coat of the Honky Tonk Red, which is, as you can see, amazing coverage. And I'm just leaving the little pine handles exposed wood on this one. So I let that first coat dry, which didn't take long in the sunshine, and then I went in with my second coat. So you can see I've changed brushes here, and that's because I am going to build up a little bit of texture on the surface of this now. So I'm using a premium chip brush, which has natural bristles, which is going to give me more of a textured finish, as opposed to the synthetic brush that I used for the first coat is designed to give you more of a smooth finish. And as you can see, I've changed the technique as well. So I'm stippling the paint on the surface, and that again is just gonna help give me a little bit of texture, which is hopefully going to give me a little bit more of a rustic finish. Once that second coat was dry, I then went in with some sandpaper off my electric sander. This is a 120 grit, so it is quite an abrasive sandpaper. And I'm just gonna highlight all of the edges and corners by rubbing the sandpaper over it, and that's gonna reveal the pine underneath. So there's various different ways you can distress pieces. This is just one of them. And this is just gonna help give the piece character and that kind of rustic vibe that I'm going for. Next, I'm going to add a clear coat over the top of this, and that's because this piece is going to be used in my kitchen. So I'm going to add a clear coat for protection, and I'm going to use a synthetic brush with this. I'm just adding a really small amount of clear coat to my brush, and just using a really light hand to put a fine layer of clear coat over the top of the paint. It's always best to try and do a couple of thin coats of clear coat, as opposed to trying to do one thick layer. So here I'm just showing the difference between the handle lengths of the brushes and this is important because I use the original brush that I've just shown you and I found that the handle was banging when I was trying to do inside of the alcoves. So I changed it to the mini and that worked absolutely fine. So this is still a synthetic brush, it's just slightly larger than the one that I was using before, but because that handle is much shorter it just means that I can fit in those alcoves without the handle knocking. Finally, I'm going to add some shading with brown wax and I'm going to use a premium chip brush for this and all I do is dab a little bit on the bristles and then take it off on the, on the side of the tin, so take any excess off so you've not got too much product on the bristles and then I'm going to apply this quite liberally in all of the sort of areas that I want to add shading, so kind of the recesses and I'm just going to feather that line down slightly so it's not such a harsh line where the wax finishes and then the red paint starts. So I'm just gonna feather it down lightly without adding too much product onto the bristles. And then all the little alcoves, I'm gonna add exactly the same shading in all of the recesses.
again for the individual drawers I do find waxing easier when the drawers are in the piece because I can get a better idea of how it looks I don't want this to be really symmetrical I want it to kind of look old and aged and kind of authentically aged so you don't have to be perfect when you're applying wax because you can control the wax placement in a second I'll show you how to do that in the next step and obviously because we've put that clear coat down it's just going to create a barrier between the paint and the colored wax which means the colored wax isn't going to grip onto the paint so much and it'll give you much more control over your colored wax So before the wax has had a chance to dry, obviously I've just applied it and then I'm going to scrunch up a shot cloth and remove the excess. This is also going to buff it as well and this creates a softer line between where you've added the shading and then where it merges into the red paint. If you do find you've added too much wax and you don't like the look of it, you can remove this with either a damp rag or a baby wipe because Best Dang Wax is water based. So you don't have to remove it with any special chemicals or anything like that. Um, but all I'm doing is basically just rubbing the excess off and just softening that line slightly between where I've added the brown wax and it merges into the red paint. So I always like to show you a couple of close-ups of the finished piece. You can see the shading here on the drawers with the brown wax and the distress work and the little bit of texture in the paint finish. And here is the final shot, which I staged with some flowers out of the garden. Thank you for watching as always. If you wanted to pick up any of the products that you've seen in the video, make sure you head to your local Dixie Bell retailer and make sure you are subscribed to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. I'll catch you next time. Bye.